Big changes are coming to the electric vehicle tax credit, and this could create a lot of confusion. You see, earlier this year, the Inflation Reduction Act was introduced by lawmakers and signed into law by President Biden. Within this Inflation Reduction Act was a new revamped electric vehicle tax credit system that would give electric vehicle buyers a $7,500 tax credit based on the purchase of a new EV. And for the first time ever, it would also get used electric vehicle buyers a $4,000 tax credit. So if you bought an electric vehicle in 2023, you could get a $7,500 or a $4,000 tax credit based off of which electric vehicle you purchase, which is quite a bit different than the current electric vehicle tax credit system, which is based off of production numbers and phases out as production increases. So in theory, this electric vehicle tax credit is really great for both the manufacturer and the consumer and seems as though it's exactly what we need in order to increase electric vehicle purchases across the entire country. The problem, as things currently stand, virtually no cars actually qualify for this credit. The way that this credit is laid out places extreme scrutiny on vehicle production in order to determine eligibility and things like production and mineral mining dictate which vehicles qualify and how much they qualify for. As a result of the growing number of electric vehicles on the market today, a very select few of them qualify for the credit and even fewer qualify for the entire thing. These stipulations anger domestic and foreign automakers alike because of the fact that it severely limits which cars are currently eligible for the credit. But just yesterday, there was some new guidance regarding the electric vehicle tax credit that was released. And as a result, this could actually mean some really good news for both vehicle manufacturers as well as electric vehicle buyers. But it is sure to create a ton of confusion. So let's break it down and let's dig into it. Yesterday, the U.S. Treasury issued new guidance on the electric vehicle tax credit, stating that electric vehicles leased by consumers can qualify starting January 1st, 2023 for up to $7,500 in commercial clean vehicle tax credits, a decision that makes those assembled outside of North America now eligible. When this news was announced, there were dozens of headlines that were released stating this news, but very few articles actually explained in depth what this means for you as the consumer. So in order to explain this accurately, the one word that I really want to focus on is commercial, which if we head over to the IRS's website, we can get a glimpse into what exactly this means. And here you can see all of the different stipulations for the commercial clean vehicle credit. And it goes down to talk about not only who qualifies, but which vehicles qualify as well as how to claim the credit. There is also additional information on this website regarding the consumer tax credit. And I've also recorded a video about this in the past. I'll include both of those down in the description below. As we stand today, the act exempts commercial vehicles from the mineral and battery sourcing quotas, as well as the requirement that vehicles have to be made in North America. Auto industry lobbyists want the administration to interpret that as a provision to mean that cars purchased by leasing companies are in fact commercial vehicles. If this bill is in fact interpreted this way, which the treasury department indicated that it will be, rental car companies, rideshare services, and leasing companies could collect the credit on imported vehicles or those vehicles with foreign parts. And in theory, those savings should trickle down to the consumers. But where I personally see this being a huge benefit is with somebody that owns a business that would fall into one of these categories. Turo host, I'm looking at you. This means that as the bill is currently expected to be interpreted, if you have a business like a Turo fleet, for example, you will have a different selection of vehicles that you can choose from and still receive the credit compared to a normal consumer who would have a more limited selection. It also means that depending on how you purchase your electric vehicle in the future, you could reap some of the benefits of this tax credit, though the exact details of how that would work are still to be determined. In addition to this new guidance, the Biden administration and the IRS did release a new list of vehicles that currently would qualify for the credit. Again, not only are there manufacturing requirements for this credit, there's also MSRP requirements as well, which are outlined right here. And you can see that if we scroll down, you can see which vehicles currently would qualify under the current guidance. And it includes a model from Audi, multiple from Ford, General Motors, Kia, Mazda, and Mercedes are all missing from eligibility, though it is expected that General Motors will be added shortly. Nissan, Rivian, Stellantis, Tesla, Volkswagen, and Volvo would also qualify. 
But again, keep in mind that eligibility is dictated by MSRP. So depending on which types of trim you chose for your vehicle, that could boot you out of eligibility altogether. This entire EV tax credit is incredibly confusing and convoluted, and it feels as though it's a little bit unnecessarily so. But while I was going through and doing research for this video, I found that the New York Times actually had a really good explanation for why this credit is the way that it is. The New York Times stated that federal regulators face a dilemma. If they interpret the law too strictly, car makers may not even try to qualify for the credits, but if they interpret the law too liberally, it might not achieve one of its key aims, which is to compel car makers to create jobs in the United States and pivot supply chains away from China or other geopolitical adversaries. But of course, all of this begs the question of what does this mean for you as a consumer? And what does this ultimately mean if you're somebody who's looking to purchase an electric vehicle in 2023? So this is the list that's provided by the IRS that lists out the vehicles that are currently eligible for the electric vehicle credit based on today's criteria. But it is expected that lawmakers are actually going to be revisiting these qualifications in March. In reality, it could mean that this eligibility is actually taken away from some manufacturers as well though who this would affect, we still don't know. So truthfully, if you're somebody who's wanting to buy an electric vehicle and the electric vehicle that you're wanting to purchase is currently on this eligibility list, I would probably prioritize buying that in the first part of 2023 before lawmakers revisit the credit. But alternatively, if you're somebody who's wanting to buy an electric vehicle that currently isn't on this eligibility list, I would definitely hold off and wait to purchase that car until after the revisitation has been done. Because there absolutely is a chance that eligibility could change and vehicles that aren't eligible today could be eligible in a few months. All the while, keep in mind that it is expected that in 2024, this electric vehicle tax credit could begin to be applied at the point of purchase rather than through your tax return, which would be a huge game changer for the majority of car buyers. And while I think we all can agree that this electric vehicle tax credit seems to be unnecessarily confusing, there at least is some comfort in knowing that Washington is addressing it. But what the outcome of this will look like, your guess is as good as mine. All in all, if I was an electric vehicle buyer, I would absolutely wait to make this electric vehicle purchase until either A, we get more guidance on how this electric vehicle tax credit is going to work moving forward, or option B, wait until 2024 to see if this credit is in fact going to be applied at the point of purchase. Though I know for everybody waiting an entire year absolutely isn't realistic, so if you need a car sooner than later, I would still encourage you to pay close attention to what's happening with this guidance. Because it could be the difference between saving $7,500 and not saving any money at all. But like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. This is an evolving topic and we are bound to get more information as we head into 2023. So I will absolutely be keeping you guys up to date on that. Like always, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video. Happy New Year's and I'll see you in 2023.